According to the firemen, upon entering one of the apartments, the most appalling spectacle met their eyes. Seven slaves, more or less horribly mutilated, were found suspended by the neck, limbs torn and stretched from one extremity to the other. After the cook was found chained to the stove, set fire to the Lawlery Mansion, the most gruesome spectacle in New Orleans history came to light. Legend tales of slaves chained to the attic in unbridled agony. One man was found with a hole drilled in his head, with a spoon sticking out, as if Delphine was trying to scramble his brains. Another woman had her limbs broken and reset so many times when she met the fireman as he walked like a crab the demon work of Delphine La Lurie. At this point, a massive crowd had formed around the mansion. But where was Delphine? Escaped, out the carriage door with her children, never to be seen again. Her ghost now haunts anyone who stays at 1140 Royal Street, or so the story goes. This is what we know for certain. Marie Delphine McCarthy La Lurie did exist. She came from a wealthy family, she married three times. Twice her husbands died. The last one packed up his bags and left. However, there is some evidence of Delphine mistreating her slaves. A lawyer in New Orleans had to remind her of such laws when it comes to treating slaves when reports circulated of her abusing them in public. However, he found no evidence. Records show that 12 slaves died in the house between 1830 and 1834 but it didn't give any indication of cause of death. What could have been abuse could have just as easily been yellow fever as well. Finally, we do know that there was a fire in the Lollery Mansion on April 10th, 1834. And although multiple newspapers reported the fire, only one, the New Orleans Bee, reported on the mutilated slaves. This was the account I gave you earlier. The only problem is this. The New Orleans Bee is the equivalent of the National Enquirer today and even they didn't report on a crab person. Stories of mutilated slaves, holes in their heads, intestines around their waist, originated in books of the 1940s, long after any credible source could collaborate on the information. The story of a young slave who was chased to death by Delphine with a whip in her hand for snagging on her hair while brushing it originated in these books too. Could these stories have come secondhand from people whose families remember? Possibly but we'll never know. Delphine disappeared from New Orleans after the fire, never to be seen again. She fled to France where she eventually died. Whether the events of 1834 can be confirmed or not, the alarming story doesn't end there. In the years after the fire, the house at 1140 Royal Street became an all-girls school, a music conservatory, a tenement house, and finally back to a private residence. In 1894, when the house was still a tenement building, the police responded to a brutal murder. When police questioned neighbors, they reported that the man often had trouble with sprites. And the victim told of a demon in the house who wouldn't rest until he met his end. Later on, the house became an African-American all-girls school. There have been multiple reports of students coming to their teachers with scratches and bruises on their arms. When asked who did this, they always responded with, that woman. Even our own tour guides at Ghost City Tours have had their own experiences. Twice when telling the story of the young slave girl chased to death by Delphine, the tour guide's handbag kept being tugged on. On another tour, a medium felt a presence and asked questions of events before they were even told. Are these the spirits of Delphine and the slaves? Or is there perhaps a demon at work here? What we do know is that the house seems to be cursed to this day. But don't take my word for it. Come see for yourself at Ghost City Tours.